Welcome to Give Us This Day. Today I want to talk to you about an important concept, and that is the fact that sometimes we have to let go in order to believe what God has spoken. The scriptures tell us in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 that when we believe the Lord, we can be established. But if we believe the prophets of the Lord, we can prosper. And this is a scripture and a concept that we know at Mount Zion. It's something we have heard from many times, and it's something that is a part of our history, and it's a part of who we are as a church. In a recent sermon, Pastor Lauren was speaking about a chapter in 2 Kings chapter 13, where one of the kings of Israel sought the counsel of the prophet. And I want to draw out some important observations from this story so that we can learn what are some of the things we need to let go and what God can do when we're willing to do so. In 2 Kings chapter 13, we see the story of the king Jehoahaz. And he was one of the kings of Israel who lived at the time that the prophet Elisha became ill and was near death. During his encounter with the prophet, the king sought counsel because at the time, Israel had been afflicted by the Syrian armies that kept invading, that kept taking land, that kept fighting and winning ground against the king of Israel. So in order to seek for deliverance, the king sought the prophet to be able to find what is it that God could do in the situation and what God could do in the circumstances. And during our sermon in, in church, Pastor Roman recently shared that the prophet gave specific instructions to the king and told him that he should take a bow, take some arrows. And the first thing was a very specific instruction. He had to open up the window that looked to the east and he had to shoot one arrow. And then the prophet declared that the arrow was the salvation of the Lord. Now, interestingly, the second instruction was not as specific because the prophet told the king to take some arrows and strike the ground. And the Bible tells us that he struck the ground three times and then he stopped. And perhaps you wonder, why did he hesitate? Why did the king only hit the ground three times? We don't have an answer to that because the chapter does not give us too much detail about it. But what we know is that the prophet spoke and told the king, had you struck the ground six times, you would have defeated your enemies completely. So there is something that prevented the king from doing and taking action decisively. And that is what we have to note, and that is why we have to learn something from this story so that we are not in the same position and we can be decisive in the actions we take and in the steps we take when God speaks. The king of Israel had a history, and in verse 11 of 2 Kings 13, we learned that he was one of the sons of a king named Jeroboam who came after King Solomon. And we have to understand the historical context of this because the nation of Israel broke down after the kingdom of Solomon, and it broke down into the northern, the northern kingdom of Israel, and it also broke into the kingdom of Judah. And at the time, since that time, the kingdom of Israel had been divided and the nation operated in that fashion. What we learn is that the portion of the kingdom of Judah remained worshiping God at the temple in Jerusalem. But the scriptures tell us in the book of Kings, and you can read a lot more for context in chapter 12 of 1 Kings, that at the time Jeroboam set up two golden calves around the nation of Israel so that people could worship God. And you can see that immediately it presents a problem as to why did people follow that? Why did people continue to walk in those things? They knew that the Lord, their God, our God, He is a holy God. There's no carven image that can represent Him. There's nothing that we can substitute Him for. But yet, this king, in his quest to maintain power of the tribes of Israel, decided that it would be a problem for him for people to go worship God in Jerusalem, and instead he set up the two golden calves. That is the reason why King Jehoahaz was not acting decisively when the prophet spoke to him. Because instead of looking forward to what the prophet had declared and spoken to him, he was looking to his past. He was carrying the, the baggage from his family history, from the actions, from their background in, in the sense of the things that they lived with, the things that they walked with. And that's what verse 11 in 2 Kings 13 tells us, that he walked in the same sins, in the same things 
that his forefathers had walked. You see, that's an important lesson that we need to observe because as God continues to speak today and as the Lord begins to open up a new level of ministry, a new level of authority, and a call for greater things for us as the people of God, that means that we have to make a conscious choice to let go of our past, to let go of our background, to let go of the things that perhaps affected our mindsets. Because if you want to reach for the things that are before you, you can't keep looking back and you can't keep embracing and, in a sense, holding fast the things that have been weighing you down. That's where we are today, church, and that is the challenge for this hour. Are you willing to let go? And are you willing to believe for what God has spoken? God bless you today.